Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And I'm so excited today because we have a special guest today. It is author Mark Collins. He's also a coach and he is a pastor. And today he's going to talk about identity and your true calling. Most people go through life and it's so hard sometimes to figure out who we are, what we represent, why we are here, and what is my true mission in life? You know, what what is the purpose? And th these are things that people sometimes they take their entire life to figure out. And, you know, if you know some tools and strategies, they could help you actually figure out who you really are. And once you figure out who you are, you could start going through the motions and start figuring out what is your purpose and why you're really here and who you represent as an individual. And these things are so important. So I, I have Mark here today and I am so excited because he is here to teach us some amazing things. Now, if you like this um, podcast, don't forget to subscribe and follow. And I really uh, you know, like to sh shout out to all my followers and say thank you for all your support. And now for you, Mark, I am just so excited to have you on the show. You talk about a topic that is so popular to so many people because I know people that go through life and they just have a hard time figuring out what their true calling is. And, you know, I'd love to hear a little about you and yourself and, and just like a brief introductory and, and maybe just tell us about, you know, figuring out ways to figure out our true identity in life and what our true calling can be. Thank you, Stacey, and thanks for having me on the podcast. I'm excited to have the conversation with you. So who is Mark Collins? And you, you know, did a great job with the bio, so I appreciate that. So the one thing I use when I typically introduce people to what I do is that I help people to unlock and unleash their hero in hiding in their business or job, their relationships in life. My job and my passion is really to give people, like you talked about earlier, it's the tools and strategies to live out the life that they're created for. And to find out, you know, that meaning of what you're talking about, what is, who am I, what's my calling, and those big questions, right, the big ticket items in our life. I try and help people unpack them in a way that makes sense, that doesn't use what everybody else is saying and try and imitate it, but really start to unleash that person, the, the impact, right? I tell people this, Stacey, uh, I believe that every person has an impact that they're supposed to make. In fact, what I tell them is that there's an impact that is supposed to be happening in the world that has your name on it. Yeah. And what I try and help people do is to really refine under understanding what that looks like and who they are so that they can have the life that they're created for. You know, it's it's so important for people to feel fulfilled in life. And a lot of times, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of times people go through life, they live in an environment, they're told it's from the moment we're, we're children, we're told what to do, what we should eat, yeah. what, you know, like what we should study, you know, what grades to get, you know, everything is, you know, told to us and we get married and then we do the same thing and then we develop titles. And so if we go from child to adult to wife or husband or partner, or you go and, and the list goes on and then, you yeah. know, and so, you know, a lot of times when I spoke to people, it was amazing because when I would speak to people and I say, okay, let's take all those titles away. Who are you? I would say, I tell me a little about who are you? And they would go back to those labels. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> take those labels away. When you take all those things in life, who are you inside? I would say, and they just looked at me with this stump look on their face. They they would just sit there and stare at me and it would take them a while to try to figure out who they were because they didn't know. How, you know, yeah. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that you come across with the same problem. You know, what are ways that we can, you know, do to, to figure out who we really are and what really brings joy and happiness into our life? Yeah, I love that question, Stacey. It's really the core of what I do with the people I work with. I have a course called Life Mastery, a book, Life Mastery, Living Life by Design, not by default. The foundation of both of them was the foundation I used in my own life and really starting to unpack some of that. What I tell people typically is you're either living from who you're created to be or what your life has told you. And it's exactly what you said, right, Stacey? It's, it's the things that people are telling you. It's the expectations that they have on you. But many times it's also the experiences that we've walked through. Yes. I remember in my own life going through school and believe it or not, I wasn't great at every subject. Math was definitely one I had a struggle with. Yeah. Well, come to find out, I don't know if this happens in your school district and where you were at, but in my schools, kids weren't necessarily kind. Yeah. And it wasn't really a great thing when you stood out for the wrong reasons. And oh, so yeah. 
you know, as a young person, when you're kind of walking through life and you're struggling with a subject, there's this identity statement that you take from it, or you can typically, and it's this, I'm not as smart as everybody else. Yes. And what's interesting, Stacey, is that that label, that identity that says, I'm not as smart as everybody else, has an effect and an influence on the rest of your life. Oh, Apart from the transformational journey, yeah. you're living from that place. And so you don't try those, the big ticket items, those amazing dreams in your life. Or when things happen, my wife and I had a business and, you know, businesses are wonderful ways of figuring out the holes that you have in your belief system. Yeah. And so when the finances aren't there in business, you remember, oh, well, you're not as smart as everybody else. Or, or when you're struggling with an issue, you can't figure out a problem or you're not getting the solution you need. All of a sudden, those mindsets, those thought processes harken back. They, they look back at who you believe you are. Yeah. What I tell people is this, your, your past tries to tell you who we are, your presence, your present times prove it and your future becomes it. Yes. And so how do you, how do you become different? It's exactly what you said. I love the question that you've asked the people that you have conversations with. It's the exact same thing that we use. It's this, it's understanding who are you apart from your titles, your roles, your positions, your possessions, your income, you know, your bank statement, who are you apart from those things? Right. And for us, the thing that I use is what we call an I am statement. Mm -hmm. One of the very first things I invite people to do is to create an I am statement. And it is with that in mind of understanding all those things that we just talked about, set those aside and what's left. What's left is who you are, right? your character, your value, your worth, your passion, right? Your goals, the things that drive you, the things that make you, the things that are unique about you. Mm -hmm. And so we use an I am statement to start to unpack understanding, hey, who are you? Right. Because what I know in my own life was I expected success to overcome my lack of belief in myself, yeah. and it never did. Mm -hmm. My wife and I created and, and managed an amazing business. We sold it for a profit, and that was awesome. But the interesting thing was from the start to finish, imposter syndrome, fear of failure was always with me. Yeah. You know, maybe like some people that are listening to this, I, those times when you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning where you're, you know, that the finances aren't there to meet the bill, the bills or the payroll or the things that you're doing, or, or you have a job and you don't know if it's going to happen, or you know that there's a layoff coming or right. Life happens to all of us. And there's many things that we have that give us those feelings of imposter syndrome and those things. So when success, when life is supposed to tell me who I am, what happens when it's not a positive response? Right. What happens when something isn't working? Right. So for us, it's creating an I am statement. Who are you? But there's also a couple other tools if I could share those, Stacey. Oh, please. The second thing I do is I ask them, the people that I work with to write a celebration list. Mm -hmm. And the celebration list is really the answer to this single question. What do you love about you? Right. Because what I find in the people that I work with, as I found in my own life, was if I was to look in the mirror and somebody was saying, what do you see? You're always finding a flaw, your issue, a challenge. Even in business success, I was working with a multi-million dollar, you know, transactional business owner, a guy who is amazingly, is amazingly successful at what he's doing. But him, like a lot of people that I know, when they look at the things they've done, even the successes... Yes. They look at what, oh, I could have done this better, or, oh, I should have made that decision, or I should have gone in that direction. It would have been easier. Yeah. We don't give ourselves enough credit for celebrating who we are because we're always waiting for something else to be perfect. Yeah. And once it's perfect, then I'm okay. Yeah. So I invite the people, hey, create a celebration list. I've done over 100 for them. I just invite them to do 20. What do you love about you? What are the things about you that you're like, man, I'm glad I... I'm glad I have an easy sense of humor. I'm glad I'm compassionate. I'm glad I'm an animal lover. I'm glad I, I love chocolate or I love exercise or I, I do these things in my life, right? It's the things in you that are worth celebrating. Right. If we can't celebrate ourselves, then how can we receive compliments and celebrations from other people? Yes. The third, the last thing that we do to really kind of round out identity is an accomplishment list. Mm -hmm. And I've written over 130 for myself, but I invite them to only write 20. Mm -hmm. And it, and the interesting thing, Stacey, as you already know, when you get to 30 or 40 or 50, well, all the amazing things, all the marquee moments, all the big ticket items are off the list. And now it's stuff like, well, I pay my bills on time. I, I, I show up to my business at, when I'm supposed to. I, I do this or I do that. And the interesting thing is what folks don't realize is if you can't celebrate small successes, you'll never have big ones. Yes. A lot of times we wait till we, whatever the thing is, we win the World Cup, we win the Super Bowl, we get an Olympic gold medal, 
before we celebrate ourselves without realizing that those people that are high achievers in their life, that are living the life that they've dreamed of, yeah, celebrate themselves along the way. They don't wait till they get there to say, now I'm good. Right. So for us, it comes down to that. Really, what is identity? And it comes down to three things. I am statement. What makes you unique apart from what you do? Not the outcomes. Who you are creates your outcomes. Your outcomes don't create who you are. Yes. The celebration list. What do you love about you? You're worth celebrating and you're worth recognizing that there is things to celebrate about you. And the third is accomplishment list. And that really comes down to this. I used it in multimillionaires. I've used it with college students. I've used it with high school seniors. Yes. What it is, is it's a quick, simple statement that says, I have a track record of success in my life. Mm -hmm. When those negative thoughts happen, when you're having struggles with fear of failure, or you're trying to reach out for that big goal in your life and you're like, oh man, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah. Well, now you have a list that says, no, but I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. Not everything is perfect. Not everything is successful. But what I guarantee is I've not met a person yet who doesn't have a track record of what I call ordinary successes in their life. Right. But when you stack up those ordinary successes, you get to extraordinary ones. Yeah. And so that's the third tool that we use for that as well. Oh, I love that. I love that. And those are the things that are so important because I think first it's it's recognizing who you are as a person. And yeah. second person, the second thing is really celebrating the things that you've done, you know, like you mentioned, you know, I, I think people don't give themselves credit when it's deserved. I think people don't... Um, and many times, you know, people, they, they accomplish things in their life and they've yeah. done so many great things, but they don't see it, you know, and they, they don't focus on it. Well, a lot of times I see is people focus on the things that they can't do or they haven't done. They focus yeah. on the negative than the positive. And when you do that, you always think of the worst outcomes and the worst things that could happen. And, and then they find themselves not achieving their their full potential because they're 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 looking at the wrong things when they should be focusing on on the positive things in their life and and who they represent and their core values and and really focusing on those things and those things will help you understand who you are as a person and if you understand who you are and you understand your true identity and your true calling those those negative things a lot of those those things that we focus on we won't be focusing on anymore and exactly and then, and those pats on the back that you give yourself, when you talk about rewarding yourself, you know, you should always wait, you always should consistently reward yourself and give yourself a pat on the back for every little thing you do and not wait until you win that Olympic gold medal and do something outstanding because everything we do in life, every, every th little thing matters. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. No, I agree. And, and the interesting thing is, uh, you know, you and I both know that what we're talking about is a mindset. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're giving not just strategies, but we're giving you a framework for a mindset that says that I am a person of accomplishment. I am a person of value and worth. I am a person who has the ability to succeed. And when you start with a mindset like that, positive affirmations and looking at the things to celebrate versus the things to, you know, be disappointed in. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's a, you know, I'm a pastor, so I'll tell you, there's a, there's a scripture that in the understanding of it, what you find out is the things that I celebrate increase in my life. Yes. And yes. so if you're celebrating those good things, if you're thinking about those good things, if your mindset is towards, you know, accomplishment and, and access and, and value and worth, now all of a sudden, the true you gets to show up as, as I talked about earlier, that hero in hiding, yes. that hero in hiding is the true you, the one you're created to be lived out. Yes. And that person can't be lived out if you're always saying, well, I'm not this or I haven't done this or I'm not good enough here. But when you start to give yourself validation with the truth yes. of who you are, now all of a sudden that man, that woman gets to show up. Yeah. And in those places, not only do you show up, you show up with empowering emotions, you show up with energy, you show up with belief and passion and drive. And now all of a sudden those goals that you've had, those those dreams, the the big dreams in your life. Yeah. You're not afraid to go after them because you finally realized you're able to do it. Right. Oh, so true. So true. And I, I think, you know, it, it's so important that people really have a strong mindset and they, yeah. they, they, they focus on these things because, you know, and, and I think a lot of these things, it's great if you put it, you create a journal too. It seems like if you yeah. really create a journal and you, you, kind of organize and categorize all these things and you work at it on a consistent basis, it'll probably even help you become stronger <laughs> and become more, yeah. more, you know, um, 
true true to your true identity understand your calling may build your self-esteem up as you make those those goals and you get reward yourself for all those little things um how do you like journaling Well, to be totally honest, those first three things that I told you about, there aren't things that I just ask people and invite them to recite. I ask them to write it down. So journaling for sure. But when, in, again, in regards to what we're talking about, the strategies for identity, when you write them down, there's a there's a cognitive um, increase in the things that you believe and do. There's interesting studies that show that the things I speak out, they have a certain level of success in my life. But when I actually take and do a physical action of putting them down on paper, when I see them as I'm doing them, when I give myself a reference to go back to, Yeah. now all of a sudden they become more concrete and more tangible. And actually people who do that are vastly more likely to achieve those goals and those desires. So if our goal is, again, unleashing that hero in hiding, you're vastly more likely to do it if you don't just kind of off the cuff I, you know, I celebrate that I'm, I love that chocolate. I celebrate that I'm this tall or I do these things or I like these things. And then you move on and forget about it. But when you give yourself, like you said, a journal, something to go back to and something to tangibly write down. Now, all of a sudden that actually adds fuel to the fire and the belief system. So you're actually able to live it out. Yes. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. I feel it's much more powerful when you write it down on paper. When you Yeah. once when you write it down on paper, you, you keep track of it instead of just Yeah. realizing it, saying it, and then forgetting about it. But when you have it down on paper and you go back to it, you're like, oh, you know, I am this, I am that, you know, and it reminds you and it reaffirms, you know, who you are as a person. And then as t time changes too, you might come to realization too, I would think. And you might be other things that you didn't even realize, or you might have changed and become, other things have come into your life. And you realize that you're not just this, this, and this, but you're this also. And that's Yeah. Exactly. how it's like a building block almost. No, that's profound. I love that you're saying that. And that's exactly what we talk about is that this, what we call a life mastery journey is a journey. It's not a moment. There's moments of great victory and exciting times in it, but it is a journey. So the person that I am now starts to continue and I start to understand more and we start to, you know, envision more and I start to go to higher levels in my own life. And now all of a sudden that person's developing. What I tell people is you're really living from who you're created to be. And that person continues to unfold over time. The goals I had yesterday aren't the goals I succeed at today because I've already done them. And so there's just these levels of increase in, in not just value and worth, but increase in impact in life and purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, when you work with people, you know, a lot of people, especially in our society, they they want results so quickly. But when it when it comes to figuring out who you are as a person, when it comes to figuring out your true identity, what your calling is, I don't feel like it's a one, two, three process. I feel like it takes time. It really it's really understanding who that inner self is, who that person inside you is, you know, And it and it would be, I would think, a, a slow process, but a very rewarding process. What is your intake on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think there's 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 two sides to the coin. The first side is exactly what you're talking about. You know, the truth of the matter is I actually turned 60, I think, uh, two weeks ago. Oh, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. So if you look at what we had talked about earlier, you're living from who you're created to be or what your life has told you. I've I've have I've had a life that's exactly that long. And so for any of us, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 or older, you've had a period of time where your life has told you who you are. Apart from understanding revelation and transformation, you're living from who you believe you're supposed to be. Yes. And so in that place, well, if it took me 40, 45, 50 years to get to this place, and I've had those thoughts repetitively, those actions, those words that I've used, well, are those going to change in two minutes or one conversation or the reading of one paragraph? No, they'll, they'll change over time. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is transformation happens over time. Mm hmm But there's these moments, just like we had talked about, when I tell somebody this, who you think you are, you'll become in that single sentence is a revelation that will change their life forever. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden, I know that I've got um, the ability to master my thoughts. I, I don't have to have my thoughts just come up and I try and bludgeon them with affirmations until they're quiet. Yeah. But I actually have the ability, like the title of my book, Living Life by Design, Not by Default, Right. to not live by default, but to live by the design and be able to actually actively engage in the transformation of my life, not just letting life happen to me. And I guess I just got to respond the best I can. Right. See, in, in one sentence and in one conversation, your life can be transformed forever. But the practice of it, I was talking to a lady who runs marathons yesterday. See, 
you can become a marathon runner. And so that event, I actually was in the same city she was, come to find out when we had our conversation. Well, there was training that led up to that event. She was highly successful at that event. It was a marathon in uh, Santa Barbara, California, a really nice area out here. Well, she did great in that event. And so if you took that event and you said, wow, you're amazing at this, what you don't realize is the track record of going to work out, taking those runs, eating and diet and sleep and rest and all of those things that she did to do that. Yeah. We see the marquee moment and we expect, oh, okay, well then I should be able to do it in five seconds, one conversation, <laughs> one lesson. Yeah. But it takes time. But what I help people to understand is the other side of that time is who you're created to be. The other side of that time is the life you're created for. The other side of that time is the purpose that you're absolutely made for, not the life that you're left with or the one you settle for, but yeah. the one that you're made for. So while it is a bit of a journey, there are moments of amazing transformation and revelation. And in each of those cases, to me, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, I'll be somewhere at the end of my life. Yeah. It'll either have been the life that I was created for with the impact that I'm supposed to have or the one that I settled for because the other journey took too long. So I'm just going to stay here. Yeah. My passion for people is that they don't settle for, but they unleash their life. Oh, a hundred percent. And I love that you mentioned that because a lot of times people see other people, they, they've achieved what they want to achieve in life. They either get envious or they're like, why am I not there yet? I'm just as good. But then you don't look behind the scenes and look at yeah. everything that they've done to get there. And most of the time when you speak to people that have gotten to a certain level in their life or they have achieved, you know, a certain thing that you may have always wanted to achieve, well, it's taken a lot of effort to get there. And a lot of people talk about a lot of failures that they, they had along the way because it wasn't an easy road, you know, and, and not yeah. everything is, is 100%. You may try, you might do different things and try to figure out things and it's just not working. And so then you try something else to try to figure out things until you get to that point in life where everything, the puzzle starts to come together and then you start coming to little realizations and those realizations become big realizations. But for a lot of people, it takes a while to get there. You know, there's so many times you've probably heard this yourself. People say, oh, if I could just do, know what I know now and, and be like 30 years younger, you know, and knew this in my 20s or my 30s, you know, because it it, it just for most people, it takes a it takes time to figure out your identity and calling. You do have that small. Yeah. I've come across a couple of people that talk about they knew from day one since they were a kid that they were going to do this and they wanted to do this and they had really big goals and dreams and they achieved them, you know, at a young age. But for the most part, I would say 98 percent of the people I've met. It took time to get to that point. And, and like we said earlier, you know, there are people who are still in their 40s and 50s and 60s and they're trying to figure out who they are or they just figured it out because it's, it's not a, a one, two, three process for most people. How do you feel about that? No, I, I love that you're saying that. You know, I mean, first off, the one thing I would tell them is that failure is a part of every success. Mm hmm. I haven't met anybody. I mean, we could talk about, you know, some of the folks you've talked about who knew what their calling was and those things. But even in that, I guarantee you there was failures along the way. I've never met anybody who the first time they did whatever, an athletic endeavor, an artistic endeavor, started a business, created something, that it was successful right away, that everything just fell into place. There was yeah. no struggle, no issue, no challenge. Because the truth of the matter is there's the character that needs to be built along the way for you to steward the thing that you have at the finish line. Yes. And so failure is a part of every success. I mentioned a, a business that my wife and I, we were very successful in. Well, that was our fifth one. Mm -hmm. The first four had moder moderate to very little success in them. And we found out eventually, well, these weren't working out. Right. But there was this internal passion that said that, you know, we're meant to have an impact. We're meant to invest in our dream, not somebody else's. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't have a job. There's different things that are made for everybody. Everybody's impact is unique to them. Yes. It could be in a job, but for us, it was this understanding of, no, we want to, we want to create our own thing. We're those kind of people who want to create. Not everybody does, but along the way, there's failures along the way, there's challenges. Yes. And the struggle is that, well, I mean, I guess I'll go in this direction. There's a, people who know what they're doing right away. Oh, this is me. This is always going to be me. So from a young age, they're doing it. And I celebrate those people, mm -hmm. but for the rest of us, that isn't necessarily the case for yeah. the rest of us. Again, 
living from who you're created to be or what your life has told you, most of us are living from that second category until we have a conversation or listen to a conversation like this, grab transformational course like I have. But in that place, there's two things I'd tell you. The first one is it's not too late. Right. Whether you're in your 20s and, oh, you know, I missed college or, or you're in your 30s and, oh, I didn't do this or, you know, whatever the thing is that is telling you it's too late, you shouldn't do it is a lie. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's never too late for transformation. It's never too late to have an impact in the world. It's never too late for you to be able to live out that life of you unleashed in amazing ways. Yes. And the second thing I would tell people is this. A lot of times I will talk to people who are using their present to look at their past, meaning yes. I look at who I am today and I'm like, oh, wow, if I, like you'd said, if I only was able to do that in those times back then. Yeah. The challenge with that is I'm, we're always feeling like we blew it, we missed it we really fell short. And the truth of the matter is all of that is part of your journey. Yes. It's not that we should go through struggles, trials, challenges, and issues. Mm -hmm. But if we knew now what we knew then, then we would have done differently then. That is absolutely true. Yeah. But why should I beat up the man I was in my 20s? Right. Because the man I am in my 60s knows more. Right. I would celebrate who I am. Yes. Look back and understand and give myself grace for what I've walked through yes. and then look forward to now that I know yeah. now what's life going to look like. Oh, I love that. That's so well said. You know, I, I think if everybody had that mentality or that mindset in, in particular, I think people wouldn't be so hard on themselves because when yeah. you think about that, you know, and you just you look back and you you look at yourself with grace and you be you're able to say, you know, you did the best you could at that time, but look where you are now and then celebrate that and then think about, you know, where you'd like to be in the future and maybe, you know, give yourself some constructive goals and some ideas of where you want to be headed and what your true, you know, calling is, you know, and and think about, oh, I well, I'm doing this right now. I would love yeah. to do this and set up some, you know, constructive of goals for yourself, you know, it gives you the momentum and, and it gives you that ignition, you know, that little, yeah. you know, spark that, you know, drives you and, and makes you want to wake up and say, hey, you know, I'm here for a purpose. This is my mission. I want to do this and I'm going to do this, you know, and it brings happiness and joy into your life. And I, I think all these things, if we if we took what we just spoke about and we we look at it in that respect, I think I think it would be wonderful because now you have your, what you talked about, you have your identity, you have your true calling. And then if you look at life the way you just said, that will give you the, the, the spark and the hope and the inspiration and everything else, the motivation you need to, to continue to set goals for yourself, to really reach that true calling and to, and to, and go up higher levels. And then to leave a legacy that you could be proud of and that will yeah. help others in the long run. And, you know, and not only does it leave a great legacy, but you've actually been a great mentor to the people around you that care for you and that know you. And, you know, wow. You know, can you imagine if everyone thought like that? Yes, exactly. And well, that's, that's why I'm here <laughs> to help to help everybody think like that. And, and it's not because I want to have a large business or a major influence, although I believe both of those are happening. But yeah. it's because I believe that's exactly what everybody should, wants, that there's this hope on the inside for all of those things that you talked about. Yeah. And what I'm here to tell people is, you're right, that is you, that is the person you're supposed to be. And there is a way forward. You know, Stacey, I tell people that I created the course Life Mastery and wrote the book Life Mastery Living Life by Design because I found courses and, and teaching and trainings that changed people that would change you. Yeah. The problem with change is the habits that I use to get there are the habits I have to use to stay there. Yeah. And that sounds more like exhaustion than transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in those places, again, you in many cases, it's me just trying to be an imitation of somebody else who's successful. Right. And at the end of the day, even if you're successful at doing that, you're still only second place. Right. And imitating somebody else. And so I created the transformational course because I couldn't find it out there. And my passion for people is to help them understand that there's a blueprint for this. Yeah. Even if you haven't found it, it is actually out there that whatever age right. you're at, you can live the life that you're created for. The person that you believe you are on the inside is actually the truth of who you are. Yeah. If you find the ability, strategies and tools to to access it, to unleash that hero in hiding. 
right. then that person will be exactly who you're created to be. And, and at the end of the day, I think that's what everybody wants. They don't want success necessarily because people have had success. I have clients who have had success and it's like, I'm still unhappy. I still have fear. I still have imposter syndrome. The things that nobody knows about that I wrestle with at three o'clock in the morning or when the clo doors are closed and things I'm not sharing with my spouse, right? It's those things that success doesn't give you. Yes. But there's another side of that and that's fulfillment. Yes. And so fulfillment isn't just success where I achieve something at a high level. It's me literally understanding that this is exactly who I am being lived out. Yes. This is exactly what I'm created to be. And so in that is just this high level of understanding that, man, this is this is me. Yes. That's what I want to give people is the ability to say this is my impact, whether it's somebody who's raising their children and, and being a parent is their thing or or serving socially or or doing a business or creating an artistic endeavor or whatever the thing is that is your thing. It's different for every person. But what I do know is this. There is a scripture that says God's no respecter of persons, which means this. He loves all of his kids the same. Right. And what I believe is what's on the inside of me and also in you, Stacy, is for every person out there. There's not those unique people who get to have joy and fulfillment. And then there's the rest. Yes. There's those that are using the strategies and the tools, the blueprint to get there and those who are not. Yes. That's so true. I love it. I love it. Now, tell me a little about your book. Like You just described some of the things, but in your book, what was your purpose? Did you create like different tools and strategies in the book? Did you go over certain specifics that you wanted to emphasize on? Like what, what is your book about a little? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so I have the course Life Mastery Living Life by Design, and I, I developed that and created that and used that with, you know, at this point, several hundred people so far. And but there's two things. The first thing was uh, my mom told me I should write a book. <laughs> and so you write about what you know, and my passion is life mastery. I could talk about it all day and night. So yeah. I knew what I was going to write about. And what I wanted to do is give people, well, I, well, I call the book this, I call it the the quick start guide to life mastery. Yes. So so just like the quick start guide for your phone or your car or whatever, it's those those things you need that the the nuts and bolts of what you need to know right now to be able to function in it. Yes. And so in the Life Mastery book, what I did was I I created chapters to unpack some of the tools and strategies we have in the course. But what I tell people is what I wanted to do, the intent was to give you something you could read today, you can implement this week, and you can right. find transformation this month. I so it. it it has all of the, you know, the framework of the tools that I have in the course, but it has them in a, in a more um, refined version so that you have, you know, just do this. Right. We have, you know, there's, there's 14 hours of teaching. There's a ton that's in the course. It's, you know, what I call an A to Z system yeah. to get you to that place that you're called to. But I wanted to give people nuggets and tools that they can live in. To be totally honest, the book is also a way for me to kind of share more of my personal journey. Mm-hmm. So people don't put me on a pedestal and say, oh, okay, well, you've always known this. So you've always had this, <laughs> but for them to know that, no, I've got, I'm a guy who's got a family who has a past, who has had a life, yeah. who's told them who has had struggles and issues. And, you know, we've all had pain and issues in our life. And so it was kind of the ability to kind of, Hey, this is some of who I am. So people start to understand that it's not just great tools that I thought somebody else needed. It was ones yeah. I needed. Right. And as I was living it out, I invested it into others. I love it. I love it. Now, where could people find your book? Well, that's, you can get it on Amazon, mm -hmm. but my recommendation would be to get it on my website. My website is uh, freedom-4-life.net, freedom-4-life.net. Um, the reason I say that is because I have an e-version of the book. Mm -hmm. So you can get it as an e-book version on my website, which means you can keep it in your phone and your tablet and wherever else you want to have it. Right. Um, but I have it out there and I have my, my course on my website as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, um, can you tell us the different services that you provide that we can um, look on maybe on your website or, you know, uh, different things that you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do have the courses that I have out there and the courses are typically self-directed as as we've unpacked some of the things we've talked about today. You understand what I wanted to do is create courses that people could do at their own pace. Right. Versus here's these eight lessons over eight weeks. If you learn something great, if not, well, it's done. Yeah, I, I, this this journey of life mastery is not something you can do in eight weeks. There's things you can grab and you'll be completely different in eight weeks. Yeah, but it's a, it takes different amounts of time for different people. Right. And so those self-directed courses are out there. I also have one on one coaching and, and that I do investing in other people, mentoring that I do as well. I have the book that I have out there. Honestly, on the website as well, I also have a free discovery tool. Mm -hmm. what the discovery tool is is the free survey you take and it'll let you know hey what's the things that are standing in the way from me living that purposeful life right now right 
So, you know, I have those, those courses and opportunities out there as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, if you had to look at today's conversation and you really wanted to summarize it and, and you know, create certain things, you know, so the listeners can understand, what are some of the takeaways that you'd like to emphasize on today? Um, the first one is this, you're more than the things you do, and you're actually separate than the things you do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the things you've accomplished aren't amazing in your life. What it does mean is they're a horrible substitute for identity. Right. So who you're created to be, the people I've talked about, even including the people in the multi-million dollar field and range, are actually doing better because of the things that they're doing. So it's not something that I can't be successful until. What it does mean is I'm going to be unleashed because... When I understand who I'm created to be, I'll live the life I'm created for. Yes. And those are the things I would tell people. One quick nugget that if I could do as an aside, mm -hmm. here's the way that you can live it out in a way that is tangible for you. Those lists that I told you, the I am statement, celebration list, accomplishment list, we use those as the affirmations that you put into our one of the tools we use, which is mastering your thoughts. Right. I mentioned it briefly, who you think you are, you'll become. Yes. If you want to have that life you're created for, that person on the inside you want to see on the outside. Yes. Master your thoughts, give yourself affirmations that aren't just generic things that you could say, I am rich, I am wealthy, I am amazing. Yeah. Those things never work. But if you do affirmations that are in alignment with who you are, yes. identity, celebration, accomplishment, mm -hmm. now you'll see that man or woman lived out. It right. all changes with your thoughts. Your mindset is really your thoughts lived out. Yes. If you change your thoughts, you'll change your life. I love that. That's so powerful. Well, this has been an amazing conversation, Mark. I, I am so glad that you came on the show. You hit a topic that I think everyone at, you know, struggles with. And at some point in their life, you know, some figure it out. Some, you know, are still trying to figure it out. But with with all the information and all the knowledge and expertise that you have and that you share today on the show, you really give a clear step-by-step -step way of figuring out what your true identity is, who what your true calling is. And the great things about yourself that does need to be celebrated and how you could not focus so much on the past, look at the past with grace and let focus on the future, who you are today, and then, you know, be able to work on that as a building block and then look at yourself in the future and give yourself some really common ground goals that you can achieve to make yourself even feel better. Now, so with all these things that you gave us a whirlwind of information today, I just want to say thank you because it was, this show was amazing and you are amazing. I'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for what you do because you are, um, you are very much a true asset to our, our society. We need more people like you. Thank you so much, Stacey. I appreciate the conversation. It's been awesome having, having it with you. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. You as well.